Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about cesarean section. A cesarean section is the delivery of the baby, placenta and fetal membranes through a surgical procedure where the surgeon makes a cut in the abdomen. It can occur planned or as an emergency procedure. The incidence of cesarean sections has increased from 5% in 1970 to 21% in 2021, due to several reasons, such as cesarean sections being more safe nowadays, and also in earlier decades, baby that presented in breech position were more often given birth to vaginally than by cesarean. And also procedures such as high forceps and mid forceps are currently not used anymore in most countries. Also women that have given birth via a cesarean section before are now often advised to give birth via a cesarean for the next pregnancy as well. Indications for a cesarean section can be divided into maternal factors and factors affecting the baby. Maternal indications include a narrow pelvis and cephalopelvic disproportion, so basically that the baby is too big to fit through the pelvis. Also pelvic tumors or cervical cancer are an indication for a cesarean section, as well as antepartum hemorrhage, hypertensive disorders of pregnancy, abnormal uterine action, active herpes infection, previous uterine scars, such as in a cesarean section or hysterotomy, and a previous repair of a vesicovaginal fistula. Another indication for a cesarean section is placenta previa, where parts or the whole placenta is overlying the cervical opening. Fetal indications include malpresentation and malposition, such as the baby being in breech, so with the feet down instead of the head down, or a variation of the cephalic presentation, such as brow, face or chin presentation. Also, a prolapse of the umbilical cord or fetal distress before full cervical dilation are indications for a cesarean section. Acute scenarios in which the fetus does not receive proper blood flow, like in a placental abruption, also in cases of multiple pregnancy, so when the mom is having twins or even more babies in the same time, is usually an indication for a cesarean section as well as macrosomia, so if the baby has more than 4 kilo. There are usually no absolute contraindications to a cesarean section, however a cesarean section is usually avoided in cases where the fetus dies intrauterinely, or where there are severe malformations or anomalies that are incompatible with the fetal life, as well as severe cases of maternal coagulopathies, or extensive scarring or pyogenic infections in the abdominal wall, as for example after an extensive burn. Now we will talk about the process of how a cesarean section is done. Before the surgery starts, the patient is lying on her back and the legs are slightly raised. The whole body except the operation field is covered with sterile sheets. Usually the patient also receives a bladder catheter as after a cesarean section there are often problems with voiding. Also between the operation field and the patient's head, there is usually a sheet so that the patient cannot see the surgery herself. There are different anesthesias that can be done. Usually a regional anesthesia is the method of choice as the baby won't receive any of the medication. The patient remains conscious but won't feel the pain. Either a spinal anesthesia or epidural anesthesia can be done, in which the spinal nerves are numbed. Also a general anesthesia can be done, where the patient is not conscious and has to receive oxygen. In a general anesthesia, the baby will receive some of the medication, which can lead to sedation of the child. A general anesthesia is usually done when a surgery has to be done in an emergency setting, as the medication works really quickly. Usually the anesthesia is tried to be limited timely to as short as possible to reduce the exposure to the child 
and is administered after the surgeon has already disinfected the operation field and the whole preparation is done. During the surgery, first the skin incision is made. There are different skin incisions depending on which type of uterine incision will be made later. There is the classic vertical incision, the Pfannenstiel incision and the low vertical incision. We will talk later more about which incision is chosen in which type of cesarean section. After the skin incision, also the fascia, fat, muscle layer, as well as the peritoneal layers are cut and the urinary bladder is carefully pushed to the side to not be in the operation field. After the incision to the uterus is made, it is widened carefully with the fingers so that the child can be taken out of the uterus. Then the umbilical cord is cut and the baby is wrapped in warm towels and the first examination of the baby is done, while the layers that were cut are now sewed back together. Usually a double layer closure is performed to minimize bleeding and to reduce the risk for reopening of the suture. The whole duration of a cesarean section is around 15 to 30 minutes of the surgery and around another 30 minutes for preparation of the patient and administration of the anesthesia. After the cesarean section, the patient usually stays in the hospital for 4 to 7 days or longer if complications arise. Already a few hours after the surgery, the patient should be able to sit on the edge of the bed and also stand up. Early mobilization of the patient decreases the risk of developing thrombi and helps to prevent post-surgical constipation. The incision usually heals within 8 to 12 days, but a scar remains. Now we will talk about the types of cesarean section. We can differentiate cesarean sections according to the timing they occur. An elective cesarean section is done at a pre-selected time and can be scheduled according to the timely convenience of the mother and the hospital staff, such as, for example, a Tuesday morning, when the patient is pre-hospitalized and prepared to undergo a cesarean section. This is usually scheduled at 39 weeks of pregnancy. Here the risk of puerperal sepsis is minimized, as good preparation in advance is possible. Another type is the selective cesarean section, where the surgery is done after the onset of labor, when during labor a new circumstance arises, where a cesarean section is more favorable than a vaginal delivery. Another time-dependent type of cesarean section is the emergency cesarean. This is done when there is an immediate threat to either the life of the mother or baby. This is done for example in case of an umbilical cord prolapse, fetal distress, preeclampsia or severe hemorrhage. Another way to classify cesarean section is by the type of uterine incision. We can differentiate the incision in upper segment uterine incision and lower segment uterine incision. The classic type is the upper segment uterine incision and it is a vertical incision in the upper part of the uterus. It is indicated in an impacted shoulder presentation, dense adhesions of the uterus, such as for example in a myoma located in the lower uterus, cervical cancer or if a rapid delivery is indicated. Another indication is if the woman requests a tubal ligation, which can be done concomitantly in the upper segment cesarean section. It is usually associated with less blood loss, due to less vascularity, it is easier to repair, there are less adhesions to the bowel and omentum, and there is a smaller chance of developing a peritonitis after the surgery. The other type is the lower segment incision. This can be done either transverse or vertically and is usually done in the presence of a deeply engaged head, a constriction ring or lateral varicose veins. Here the patient is usually tilted 15 degree to the left side to minimize the aorto-caval compression and so to increase the blood flow. In the lower segment cesarean section, the Pfannenstiel skin incision is the most common type of skin incision. 
It is a transverse suprapubic incision that has a better healing, less incidence of incisional hernia and a better cosmetic outcome. But it is more time consuming, is associated with more blood loss and gives less room to work with during the surgery. We can also differentiate cesarean sections in either being primary or repeated, depending on if the mother had a cesarean section before. In some cases a hysterectomy, so removal of the uterus, is done in the same time as the cesarean section. This is usually done when there is an uncontrollable postpartum hemorrhage or an unrepairable rupture of the uterus. Also in cases of an operable cervical cancer it is done or in cases of a placenta accreta that cannot be separated from the uterus. If you want to know more about placenta accreta, you can see our video on that in the gynecology playlist. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Hopefully see you again in the next video.